Hello, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. So nowadays, layers are one of the most important features to learn when you want to do some advanced photo editing. So Affinity Photo has great layer support, but its operation might be confusing to beginners. So in this video, I'll be talking about how to use layers with Affinity Photo. We'll understand its interface, the various types of layers, and the applications of each type. So let's get right into it. So first, what are layers? So you can think of layers as stacks of paper that can be placed on top of one another. Sometimes Affinity Photo describes them as a stack of drawers where each drawer might have its own stack of layers or sub layers. So that is very much analogous to the way Affinity Photo layers work. But what's the purpose of layers? So in photo editing, layers are used to do any one of the following. Number one, it's to combine graphic elements. Like maybe you want to add a moon to an empty night sky. Number two, it's used to merge multiple exposures so that you can use the best parts of each image, such as what an HDR program would do automatically. And number three, it's to do non-destructive adjustments with greater control and flexibility. For this, you would use something like an adjustment layer. So those are the three main purposes of layers in my experience. So let's go now into the types of layers in Affinity Photo. So in Affinity Photo, there are four types of layers. The first one is called a pixel layer. So let's just create an empty layout here. Let's have something like 2000 by 3000 pixels. So how do you add the layer here, the pixel layer? So this one at this point doesn't have any layers. Uh, here in the right side, we're seeing that this is the layer panel. You can see it is empty, right? However, you can, let's just paint over it. Let's just paint something over this. Um, okay, so if you paint anything here, you can see that a new layer is actually created. So this is an example of a pixel layer. So as the name suggests, a pixel layer is composed of pixels. And so you can do things like draw on it, or you can fill um, items on it if you wish, right? You can also add more pixel layers through this icon here and just click on that and there will be a new layer there. Okay, so let's just make this a little bit bigger. So here, as you can see, um, I have created another pixel layer of images here, which I can draw on. Okay, so that's a pixel layer. So the next type of layer is an image layer. The easiest way to add an image layer, just to paste it in, just copy and paste, right? And so here I have now a image layer. Okay, so you can see that it has a, a label called image right you can of course change this right so let's just call this trees uh you can also change this if you want here you now let's say this is painting now why you want to do that uh, once you have a lot of layers you might get confused which layers use for what and so it might be a good idea to to label the layers you want to move the layers around you can always just drag it right so there's a concept of selecting a layer so obviously the selected layer will be the highlighted one so if i want to move this layer up, you can just simply just drag it like so here. And now it's moved up. Okay, you can also um, hide the layer, like so here. So I want to hide this. That is another layer operation hiding a layer, you could also change the opacity of a layer, right? Like so it's here. Okay, so that is changing the opacity of a layer. So as you can see here, the foreground image, which are the trees here, is uh, obscuring or hiding this uh, the layer beneath it, no? which is this painting here. So there is a type of layer to allow you to make certain parts of this uh, this layer transparent, and so you call that thing a mask layer. All right. So the mask layer, you can add the layer from the menu here. All right. Simply by use, choosing mask layer like so, or you could use, if I do that, a mask layer will be created as you can see here. Okay, so you can see at the start it is uh, blank and it's just all white, no? So all white means nothing is transparent, okay? So if you want to make something transparent, you have to paint on it. Uh, basically you wanna paint it black, which will make it totally transparent. Okay, so if I paint black here, right? So make sure that the layer, the mask layer is selected. Right, so if you do that, you can see that you're going to reveal the the items underneath here. So that's a mask layer. That so you can also delete the layer just pressing the delete key. There is a delete as well here, 
right? Or you can press the delete key. You can also create the mask layer from this button here, this icon, which has this uh, black circle. You can see that it will say that this is a mask layer, so it'll do the same thing. So, okay, so that's a mask layer. So that's the, the third type of layer. Okay, so there's a fourth type of layer. It's called an adjustment layer. Okay, so why don't we put all those concepts together by creating an image? We're going to merge um, these three images together, right? So we have this uh, set of trees, this owl, and a moon, okay? Now we have all the layers here. Let's just put the owl at the foreground here. And so what we want to do is to um, reveal some of the details on the background, right? So we just want the owl here and get rid of this. So we're going to use a mask layer for that, right? Now, uh, an easier way to create the mask layer, right, instead of like brushing over it, is to just do a selection and that, that can create a mask layer automatically. So let me just show you how to do that. So I'm going to click on this selection brush, right? And just make the width a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna use the selection brush to actually make the selection here. This will be an easier way to create the mask uh, layer properly, as I'm going to show, All right? So let's do that. Now, when you are making the selection, you have to make sure the proper layer is selected, okay? Because it's possible that you're doing this selection on a different image, okay? And that'll cause some problems. All right, so that's a decent enough selection. Using a selection is an easier way to make a mask. So everything that's selected will be opaque, while those which are unselected will be uh, transparent. Okay, so you can see that. So if, as I click on the mask layer icon, you can see that. So the whole thing is now revealed. So you can see here that the mask has been created in this layer. Now, if you wanna see this a little bit bigger, uh, you can use the combination of option click, and you can see the actual mask right there, all right? like so. Now this thing is selected, so I just want to unselect out of this. So I'm just going to use Command D or Control D. So the next thing you want to do, uh, I want the, the owl to be a little bit smaller in my image. So I'm just going to use the, the move tool here and make sure that this layer is selected and then I can just make it smaller. Okay. Okay. So let's have a size like that. Just put it right over here. We're gonna do the same thing now, but for the trees, um, we're gonna mask out the sky. We're gonna make the sky transparent so we can reveal the moon uh, beneath it. So the same thing, what you wanna do is to click the this image layer here, right? And then same thing, you'll create the mask by doing a selection on the trees. Again, I'm using the bracket key to select. Now again, if you don't want this owl to be obscuring your work, you can just hide it, clicking on this arrow here, and just hide the thing first. Okay, that looks decent enough. So again, same thing. Let's create the mask now by clicking the mask layer button. And there you go. Let's bring back the owl here. Let's just move these things in place. Oops. What I'm gonna do here now is uh, just make the moon a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna select this moon and just, uh, just resize it a little bit to make the moon more, to make the scene more dramatic, like so. Okay, that's basically how layers are used to sort of merge images or composite images together. Now, unlike some other editors, Affinity Photo also supports another type of layer called adjustment layers. As the name suggests, adjustment layers allow you to do certain operations like shadows, highlights, exposure, and stuff like that. So let's do that with this image. Now the image is supposed to be dark, it's a moon. So we're gonna make it a little bit bluer. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is just select the top image here and create an adjustment layer. So to create an adjustment layer, you have two options in the same way. You can go to the layers menu here and just use new adjustment layer, right? and just use white balance for this. Or you could also do it here and just select this uh, this circle here. It will show an adjustments label here. So if you click on that, you, you get the same menu, right? It's your own choice. Both of them work great. So I'll just choose white balance for this. And you see as I lower the 
the temperature here the whole thing gets affected so what happens here is what this adjustment layer will apply the adjustment to all the layers beneath it now let's apply another adjustment but this time let's just apply it to the bird okay so i want this bird to be a little bit darker so what i'm going to do is just uh, choose another adjustment here we're going to choose brightness and contrast and then i'm just going to lower it as you can see as i lower it because it's right at the top here it affects all the layers beneath it if you want only the bird to be affected by the adjustment right the first option that you could do to fix that is you could paint over this uh, adjustment layer so that's one of the nice things about adjustment layers they will allow you to mask so you can just do a paint here right and make sure you paint uh, black on it so what happens here is as i paint black the effect of the adjustment is actually removed. So that is one option you have with an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna get rid of that first. Now there's another option, I just do the second option. The second option is to do some clipping, meaning you can apply the adjustment only to this, to the layer itself. Okay, so what you can do is you can drag to somewhere beneath it. And there it is. So actually if you drag the adjustment layer to become a sub layer of this bird image then it will only affect the bird so let's just show that if i double click on this adjustment right it brings back the the dialog right so as you can see i can it only affects the the bird whereas if i put it up here right i drag it up here you see it affects everything okay so that is a, an example of clipping so that is an adjustment layer very powerful as well now there is another type of layer which is actually very similar to an adjustment layer and this is called a, a live filter okay so it works in the same way as an adjustment layer except that you have a another set of operations so the the live filters are basically here right this thing which looks like a hourglass is the live filter so if you click on that you'll see it has a, another set of adjustments but it's mostly uh, like blurs and clarities and the like so let's say i want to blur out you know this this background for whatever reason right so let's just add that in so i'm just going to apply a let's just say a gaussian blur okay so obviously nothing is happening because you can see i applied it incorrectly right it's being applied to this adjustment layer which is not what i want so i can just move this up right you can see now it affects everything but that's not what i want so again, you have options. You can paint black on the parts where you, where you want to remove the adjustment. That's an option. So I'm going to paint black on here. Make sure that the adjustment layer is selected. And then uh, you can reveal that like so if you wish to, right? If you want to do that. Or it might be easier to just put it below the bird. Okay, so I'm just going to put it right here. Okay, so uh, I think to make things easier, you could actually collapse this this uh, the layers and the sub layers here by just clicking on this this triangle here all right so actually i want to put this thing below the bird there you go so it, it affects only i uh, so it only affects the background i think i like it i like the moon to be sharp so i'm just going to keep it like that so that is the fourth layer and that is the adjustment layer now the fifth layer that you have is of course a vector layer it basically allows you to put in let's say a shape here like so if you want to put the shape you can also put text like this okay so let's just put something here let's say night so these are vector layers so vector layers obviously are created via mathematical calculations instead of pixels but with these vector layers you can actually apply layer effects so this this thing with the the function fx here are the layer effects all right so there's a bunch of things you could do so the thing is, uh, it's a little bit confusing, but you have to select the item first, and then you can make some adjustments. Like here's the gradient overlay. You could apply a blur if you want to it, right? Like so, or do a bevel and emboss this thing here, right? So a bunch of layer effects, just like if you're familiar with Photoshop, it's, it's similar to what Photoshop offers, okay? So that those are the layer effects. And so that's basically it that's those are layers so of course you want to save this as a jpeg file you can just export it and just save it as you you wish right? so just to summarize we've talked about the five types of layers so we started with the pixel layer which is a layer you could really draw on 
Then you have the image layer, then the layer mask, which is used to make things, the layers transparent. Then we talked about adjustment layers, which allows you to do shadows and highlights and so forth. And related to adjustment layers is live filters, which is really an adjustment layer. And then the fifth one are the vector layers. So as you can see, Affinity Photo is a very powerful program. Other photo editors can only do a few of these types of layers. So if you do raw editing software, and please watch my um, top raw editor videos. They all use layers, by the way. That's one of the characteristics which makes a good raw editor is its ability to support layers. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you found this video helpful, please help out the channel by liking and subscribing to help keep the videos coming. Until the next time, bye for now.